Hi, uh, so I'm Krish, and I'm an incoming software engineering intern at ChainGuard. So a bit about ChainGuard, so it's founded by the visionaries between cloud native technologies like Google's DistroLess project and Sigsto, and they're revolutionizing how we secure uh, the open source software supply chain at scale. And uh, they had a recent Series B round uh, led by Sequoia Capital, Amplify, and the Chain Smokers Mantis Fund. Um, I'm a student at the University of Rochester in upstate New York, uh, studying uh, computer science. And uh, Flatcar Linux is a community-driven, fully open source, and has a minimal footprint. It's secure by default, and uh, what I worked on during my internship with the team was systemd sysx. So we use them to ship custom software and also OEM software. So systemd sysx is a novel way to ship feature sets that are not part of the host immutable OS. And being immutable, image-based uh, operating systems don't have like a package manager, so you can't install OSs. Uh, you can't install packages to extend the OS at runtime. Uh, security mechanisms aimed at protecting the base OS don't allow writing to any of the parts where OS binaries and other files reside. Um, and systemd sysx allows a sysx, a system extension, uh, to be transparently overly mounted on top of uh, slash user. The end result is a stacked um, slash user with files from the extension on top and existing files from the original lower directory still accessible. So what's been happening with Flatcar? So Flatcar now uses systemd sysx extensively for updates of OEM software. So uh, an example of that is VMware Tools and Azure's uh, agent. So my script is now being used for this and also for the Docker and containerd sysx images. So what exactly is systemd sysx and why do we need it? So Flatka, as any other OS, bundles various software components of fixed versions into one release. The problem is if someone requires a particular version of software, this means that the software needs to be supplied out of band and overwrite the built-in software copy. Earlier, uh, DocX was introduced as a mechanism to switch between Docker versions, or the team told users to store binaries in a custom directory and make that the preferred directory in path. So the systemd project announced a portable services feature to cover deploying custom services. This only covers the service itself, but does not make the client binaries available um, to the user. And it doesn't fit uh, the use case fully. So systemd sysx, um, the feature finally provides a way to extend the base OS with a slash user overlay, making custom binaries available to the user. And um, the format is such that um, it can be uh, an ext4 file system, for example, or it can be like a squash FS image. And you have the um, make squash FS tool, which is used by the script itself as well. Uh, and it takes a directory's input and doesn't need like loop devices and mounting of, of an image file. So one of the first things we tested it was, was shipping Python. So the host OS doesn't have Python, uh, but say you'd need it on the system, then you could use uh, systemd sysx to include it. So within sysx, you have these technicalities. So there must be a file um, with metadata used for version matching. And the basic matching that needs to be there is that the ID of the OS is Flatka, for example, or whatever OS, uh, whatever immutable container host you're using. And if your binary is linked against Flatka's binaries under slash user, you must couple your sysx image to the Flatka version by specifying uh, the version ID in extension uh, release and then the name of the SSX image. So earlier the problem was uh, the, there wasn't a mechanism to actually update the SSX images, uh, but now the team has worked on that and it's like almost fully done. So you can use an, 
uh, you can use an ignition configuration to actually uh, in, like um, mount this SysX image to be used. So you could, uh, what's recommended is you write the configuration in YAML as everything in cloud native, uh, in the cloud native ecosystem. And uh, then you can use um, this command to basically generate the ignition configuration. And it also takes care of disabling the deprecated method to switch between uh, Docker versions. So after boot, you can see it loaded in the output of the systemd sysx command. And you can reload the images at runtime by executing um, systemctl um, restart systemd sysx, or uh, Flatco also provides um, services already to actually do this for you. So how is this useful for actually shipping container runtimes? So uh, after my internship, the project has also uh, published Docker SysX images. So you can uh, use a different Docker version than the one that the release of Flatco using provides. And the Docker releases publish uh, static binaries, including for containerd, and the only missing piece are the systemd units. So there's a script you can use to actually uh, have the script take care of all of the grunt work. So updates, like I said, are no longer a missing piece here. And uh, during my internship, like I said, there was still ongoing work from the team to update your custom SysX images. Uh, from this Flatco version, it's possible to use the systemd sys update tool to, that covers the task of downloading newer versions of your SysX images at runtime from a location you specify. It could be, you could even just host it on in like a GitHub repository that works. So more about my work, I was tasked to work with adding a systemd sysx build tool for Flatco container um, Linux's SDK and use it for a Docker sysx image migrating from TalkX to it. So what that was is a boot time add-on manager used to ship Docker and containerd. My project was structured mainly around plumbing efforts around Flatco, and the OS images we provided were not suitable as a base for building Flatco specific SysX images because it lacked the package metadata and the portage configuration. So Flatco is based on uh, Gen2 Linux and uh, actually core OS. Uh, which was a fork of Chrome OS, and Chrome OS uses the Gen2 build tools. And my script retains this information, allows you to produce systemd sysx to um, extend the system, and that's why all of the OEM software is also shipped like this. Um, it was great to see my work on introducing the script now being used to build the OEM sysx, uh, like I said, for Azure, and being able to review the PR. Um, and um, I think that's it. Thank you.